We're joined today on RealerCulture.com by Horst Bonner. He is the Provincial Soybean Specialist with Omafra. Welcome today, Horst. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Horst, uh, obviously we've had a bit of a challenging spring in Ontario. Um, a lot of farmers, obviously, we've had the consideration of uh, uh, switching out of corn into more soybeans. What, what are some of your thoughts on that right now? Well, it depends a lot on where you are in the province. For those areas that have a lot of heat units, uh, so 3,000 or more, we would say that uh, according to our calculations, even June 1st planning, it still makes sense to stay with corn, with the economics the way they are. Um, when it comes to shorter day areas or heavy clay soils, then by June 1st, really, uh, it's getting near the end for corn and we're going to have to switch to something else and most of that will go to soybeans. Mm -hmm. So you know but what are some of the yield differences between seeding soybeans say uh, you know a week ago versus June 1st? Is, is, there, a, is there a huge yield loss? Well there you know it, it all depends on the year. Uh, certainly from our trials early planted soybeans yield more um, within a year but Across uh, years, it's less clear. So what I'm getting at is, you know, in the past, uh, the 24th to the 28th of May was when a lot of producers actually aimed to seed their soybeans. Um, we've shifted that back a fair bit. So to answer your question directly, though, we would expect to lose about 0.25 bushels per acre per day from May 10th to June 1st. So for sure, you know, every day does matter now. I was reading something that you wrote saying that, you know, May is still the normal time to plant soybeans. So uh, I guess no, no reason to panic quite just yet and start lowering uh, heat units for your soybeans? No, absolutely. Soybeans are different than corn. Um, and, and when you think about today is the 24th of May, uh, that is a perfectly normal window in which to plant soybeans. The, the back half of May is what I'm getting at. Um, a lot of these beans were actually bred for seeding in the second half of May. And because soybeans are photo period sensitive, which just simply means that they start to flower um, in direct correlation to day length and temperature, uh, they also finish closer in the fall than you would expect. So a three-week later planting now in the spring only means a one-week later plant, a later harvest in the fall um, because they all start to flower around the same time. So the yield potential is yet less, but they mature around the same time in the fall to, you know, within reason, right? Yeah, so in, when I talked to some of the guys about uh, about corn, you know, there's we already start to talk about, you know, how does this set us up for harvest in terms of soybeans, but what you're saying, it sounds like, you know, harvest at this point isn't necessarily, a, is, is, is not a worry yet. No, absolutely not. Uh, it, it certainly is not. You know, if we can get those beans in in the next two weeks, harvest could still be uh, totally normal. Um, and switching in terms of switching to a shorter day soybean or shorter maturing soybean we really don't talk about that until mid-june so what about what about planting rates as soon as we get past june 1st do do farmers or should they be changing their planting rates or should they uh, hold on as normal yeah the one of the tricks about later planting is of course that the beans actually um, become a little bit shorter and have fewer nodes on them and therefore you need more plants per acre to achieve the same yield. So uh, we would suggest that you keep your seeding rates on the high side as you move into June, and as you move into mid-June, even uh, increasing them by up to 10% um, to, to try and basically get as many nodes or pods per acre as possible. And in terms of inoculation, as we get later planting, do do some guys tend to not inoculate, or and should they basically still do it? Yeah, we have no real indication that uh, the the effect of nodulation or inoculation uh, is any different with later planting compared to early planting. So, what I'm suggesting to you is that uh, from our trials we're getting enough of a benefit to inoculating um, whether you're going early or late to make it 
uh, econ economically feasible. So I would just suggest that we should always inoculate all fields, and um, there's enough money in it for us to do that. Okay. So in terms of yield expectations for, for the majority of Ontario, uh, can we still uh, try to get those that uh, 55 to 60 bushels, or where should our expectations be? Well, you tell me what the rest of the year will turn out to be, and I'll tell you where we're going to be for yield. So I, I know it's a fair question, but uh, uh, we still have every hope of a good crop, and to put a number on it is, is just sheer guesswork. So uh, I would suggest to you there's no reason why we still cannot expect uh, an average crop. Uh, so I'll just stick with that, an average crop, which would be, you know, our five-year average here is 42 bushels per acre. Um some guys uh, still have a lot higher potential for sure. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. I think the key to think that uh, the, the key to remember here is that today we're not really late. Once you start to move into June and you know tenth of June, then it, it really does become late, and that becomes a different conversation than today on the twenty fourth, right? Yeah, horse. Thanks a lot for joining us today, and uh, we'll talk to you again as the season progresses. Very good, and good good luck to everyone.